Okay, I come up with a final solution for this uh, degree wheel. I'm using to check the rotation. Now this is the one I had before, which is the standard one that comes off. And the thing is heavy. And I think that's part of the problem is that when the unit is turning, there's a lot of mass here that has to move quickly and stop quickly and uh, the inertia rate is too great so I'm I weighed this thing and it's one pound it's pretty heavy solid piece of steel basically a couple holes in it so I talked about putting a bigger spring on there and this and that and I didn't really think that was the solution so I what I do is I made this now this is this is quarter inch thick and this is 316 and part of the problem with this is that when you're rotating it you rotate it in one direction it reads the numbers up like 10 degrees 20 degrees 30 degrees so on and so forth and you know if you're looking at looking at it through the window you can you can understand where you are but if for some reason you're rotating the unit the other direction and now you're reading it backwards so you got to take these numbers and then you got to subtract to figure out where you are and uh, it just seems overly complicated and it just wouldn't work I mean it worked but it's like the long way around so like I said I made this up and this is a 316 and this one weighs 3.6 ounces and there's 16 ounces of one pound so there's 16 ounces here and there's only 3.6 here and this is really light because what I did was I took a cut on here to make it even lighter that thing is light now I could have put some some slots in there some holes in there and this and that but you know the easiest thing is you know you stick it on a lathe, you put a put a tool in there, a tree pan tool, and just go in there and just just cut it a little bit. So I think that'll work out good. Now what I did on the front was I put these degree marks, and I only put a zero here, so these are all blank. And the reason I did that is because if you're rotating it so many degrees one way let's say you're going let's say 40 degrees so if I take a marker see we know where zero is so if we take a marker and we go 10 20 30 40 I put a little mark there and if we go another 40 10 20 30 40 I put a mark there so on and so forth now the reason for this is that when you're looking at this what happens is you tend to you tend to read the number so if I put that in there and it rotates 40 degrees 4 you look at the number you say oh it's 4 and if you get up into the double digit numbers you say okay that's 180 so you're looking at the number and you're reading the number now it may not seem like a lot but you know it's just it's just time that you have to sit there and look at it and you read the number you just do it automatically as to where on this one you just look at it 
if it lines up with the mark, you know you're good. You don't have to read anything. So it's a, it's a lot faster. I mean, you're talking milliseconds, but I mean, still, it's you just look at it, you say, okay, it's lined up, you're good to go. You know, you just go to the next one, next one, next one. You know, it's like when uh, you're looking inside of a race car, you're looking at all the, the gauges. All the gauges are they're rotated in different angles, and the, the needle is, they're all kind of weird, you know. It's not like a standard car. So you talk to the guy and say, well, why are your gauges rotated? He says, "That's that way when the, when the car is running and the needle's where it's supposed to be, they're all sticking straight up. So you just take a quick look at it and all the needles are up and you know you're good. You know, if the needle is off to one side, you know you got a problem. That way you don't have to sit there and read it. You just look at it. It's a visual thing. You look at it and you say, okay, good to go. So that's one of the reasons behind this too. And the other reason is I didn't put the numbers on it because if you go in the other direction, you can say, okay, I want to go, you know, 10, 20, 30 degrees this way. And I want to go, you know, another one, two, three, four, five degrees, another 50 degrees that way. So when it's rotating the other direction, you start with zero and it goes here to that red mark and you just look at it. You say, okay, that's good go here that's good you don't have to sit there and take these numbers if it's going the opposite direction and try to figure out where you are of course you could you could put a mark on here too but then when if you use some you know acetone to get rid of this uh, sharpie you probably end up taking these numbers off too so you really don't want to do that I mean you never know when you might have to use this for something but uh yeah that's uh so I'm gonna use the same spring pressure and that's gonna be that's gonna work out real well so I think we're going in a good direction here and uh, what I did was I put a I got this little plastic it's 14 thousand stick I don't know what it is a little plastic I won't call it shim but it's a little plastic sheet and I made this little circle so what's gonna happen here is that this is gonna go in here that spins really nice look at that and this is gonna go here this is a kind of protect it keep it from hitting the hitting the plate So we put that on like that. Kind of put that on. Put that together. Look at that. Spins real nice. So you can see how that, of course, you can make a better mark there, you know. Probably put some black sharpie on there and wipe off the excess I have a nice little little letter there but see when you rotate it now you can see where you are you know if it stops there you're good but if it stops somewhere else you know you're bad <laughs> but uh, yeah I think that'll work out real well like I said I had to put a little adjustment on the back of it because the the adjustment of this you know you're trying to you know I didn't want to put bolts in here so I'm just using a clamp and what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to put a spacer back here so that I can space this I can push it in and I can move it back and forth but this is a, the adjustment for when that other wheel is riding on here if it's if it's going too fast or too slow you have to adjust this back and forth to get that to get that just right now if you're only rotating it 
you know, one time, which is what I'm doing, you know, you just, you know, you spin this unit a couple times, you watch it, and you see if it's slowly creep in one direction or the other direction, and then you adjust it. But if it's off by, you know, if it's off by just a little bit, when I go back to zero, it resets. But if you rotate this like two or three times and it's off, you know, a little bit, I think that's pretty good because I'm only going to use it, like I said, one rotation. But if you use it a lot of rotations, then you're going to have to get the adjustment a little closer. But by using this a little adjustment screw I put, I can move that, like I said, back and forth and get that. Because I was trying to adjust it with just a clamp, and I go to move it, and it moves too far. You know, move doesn't doesn't move far enough, and uh, so by putting that on, it's like a positive stop. But anyway, I just wanted to show that to you. All right, talk to you later.